Wednesday, 29th of August. Very cold night again. Yesterday was cold, today was also cold. <laughs> and uh, there's even a few signs of frost this morning around here on some of the flowers here, on the bikes as well. So, uh, the sun is just starting to appear now because we're surrounded by these uh, high mountains here now. So the sun is uh, just appearing on the mountainside there. So when it hits our tent, it'll warm up. And, uh, so it must have been cold in the night here. So that's a bit strange to think about when compared to a few weeks ago when I mean, Uzbekistan just completely uh, ro roasting to death of heat. And, uh, but uh, yeah, now it's cold in the night, just a nice temperature in the day. And, uh, yeah, today we have to get back here the main road there. It's a nice Chinese road. We have to head up here over the pass and down to a town hopefully where we can uh, stay in a hotel this evening. Okay, it's, uh, Wait for the sun to come up, pack away, get warm breakfast, and we'll be on the box. So today we're going to be riding on this nice smooth highway to a town called Koko is the plan. About 65 kilometers to do to Koko. On the way there's a mountain pass, about, uh, about 12, 13 kilometers away from here. Should we go over in the pass, Dolan Pass? And then it's uh, all downhill all the way to Kokol. So uh, let's see. If we go this way, that takes you to China. A town called Kashgar in China. If we go north, this leads us to uh, Bishkek, or Kazakhstan, and uh, Isikul Lake where we're going. So let's uh, have a nice ride on this, this road. So that's where we're camping over there. Nice piece of grass there behind this trailer. It's close to the to the main road here, but. Nobody bothered us and there wasn't much traffic, so perfect. It's hard to believe people live in places like this, but they do. We're starting at 2,590 meters here. So let's see how high we have to go over the pass. Hello, hello. The family. Danya! <laughs> Another family living in a trailer there. So from here the road leaves the river, starts climbing now up over the mountain pass. At 2,700 meters now. Let's see how much we climb now. It's much easier climbing a mountain on a nice road like this with no stones and rough gravel to dodge around. You just take it easy in grinding gear and uh, cruise up the mountain. Ah, oh, easy. Lots of people living in these old trailers here. A bit of north here. Hello. 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 Also, after this pass, we in the past we have seen some um, how to say random statues, statues, uh, eagles out of stones. And uh, we also have seen a sign of uh, snow leopards and some big uh, yard you say Deer. Yeah. D big deers. Mm, so snow leopards and deers, yeah. yeah. We have seen a sign of yeah. uh, another pass. Another pass, 3,030 meters. That's probably the, that's probably the easiest 3,000 meter pass on this trip. Let's see if there's a nice view. We have a 17 kilometer down. That should be a, a nice road. I'm going down from 3,030 meters to a 750 meter drop in altitude. That should be a nice. Even though the panorama from the panorama point is not something. Let's see what it's like. <laughs> Hopefully going today, Coco. 
cool. And if the alternative road to strong cool then it would have been good. restaurant on the map, I've got no idea what kind of restaurant it was, it might actually look like an actual real restaurant. Okay, now we managed to come down to this restaurant and the good thing is it's totally new, nice wooden house and the people that are trying to build it and also very nice because it's... Yeah, but the most, what's the most important? Is it open or not? It's oh. open! <laughs> and that is the most important thing, it's open. And they have food. And they have food. That was a great place to stop here, real restaurant. So uh, we met uh, two other cyclists from USA, they turned up, uh, a couple there. And they're going in the opposite direction to us, so we could just change uh, notes on what the roads are like ahead, and uh, that was good. And then a couple from Holland turned up, they were in a car, but they were also good to speak to. They've done the Pamir Highway. And then there's one guy in there now from England, he's doing the the uh, Silk Road race, it's a 1,700 kilometer race around the mountains here on their own. So uh, the fastest one does in about 8 days and to about 12 days I think. So that was good to speak to him, but he's different, completely different. That's just racing, racing, not uh, like us having time to look at things and stop and talk to people. It's all about speed, where we're all about seeing the view and looking at the road and enjoying the ride. But uh, that's the different way to cycle. Okay, we're on the road now. So we have about 35 kilometers to do in our town called Cockall. So it uh, should be quite a nice town with uh, hotels and things. So we'll see if we can get there today. So we've had uh, five days now with no internet. So we just got an internet, uh, well, mobile phone signal here with uh, 3G internet. So I managed to upload one video <laughs> and write to my mom that we're okay because she hasn't heard anything from us for a few days. But uh, that's the way it's like here in Kyrgyzstan. It's not everywhere there's internet. So uh, it's only. When we get to a few towns, we get internet, so but we're okay. There's uh, internet here, so we'll start putting the videos on this evening. Okay, let's get on the road. Okay, the wind has changed direction. It's interesting on this road now, we start seeing signs in Chinese as well. It's just how close we are. Now we've been descending for 30 kilometers, we're back down at 2,000 meters in altitude. So, amazing how long you can go downhill when you're up at 3,000 meters, it's like a never ending downhill. We are going to Koko. Kocho. Kocho. A little bit confused, Funny all the names of the towns, they all sound the same. <laughs> Koto and Kocho and all the other places. But it's three different countries. Yeah. Koto in Montenegro and Kokan in. Yes. In Uzbekistan and now Kokor, maybe. Kokor, yes. Yeah, all getting right. a bit confusing, but I think it's called Coach all this time. Okay, let's get going again. And well, now we're arriving in Coach in the town here. We made it to Coach 66.91 kilometers <laughs> and one mountain pass. Put a lot of dough. Okay, the couple we met for lunch in the uh, restaurant. They've been staying here yesterday evening. They recommended this place. So, let's see if we can find it. Guest House Mira, I think it's called. So, that saves us uh, reading all kinds of things on Google. We just go where they recommend easier. Let's see if they have space. Hello, hello. Hey. Turned up a guest house mirror. Okay, so we're looking. They have a nice room for us here. They have a garden in the yurt there. And we can uh, stay in the room just here. Oh, we have a room here, three bits, which is what we need. The most important thing we've been away in the wilderness for so many days without power or internet or anything just to get all our power banks charged up and telephones. That's the first thing. We're here one night, so we have to make the most of that. And then, uh... Hello. Hello, Salam. Salam. <laughs> Denmark, Danya. <laughs> so now they just made some tea for us here. There's a nice garden here. 
It's a good thing about these guest houses, they're really nice and cosy. They make dinner for us here this evening, meet other people. How's it going? What you got here? We're just tasting some nice biscuits, actually it tastes like nice <laughs> So have a cup of tea before we go in the show. So this is the dining room in the guest house here. Quite a nice place really. Once again it's uh, much better to be in a guest house than any hotel. It's really nice. Because now we have tried guest house so many times and we love to come to a new family and see how families, how they are and how they live and mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. So that is why we also just take the guest house. We want to see more family yeah, yeah. and want to see how cookies then really is in the houses. Mm -hmm. yeah. the end of uh, today once again we just uh, experience something when uh, you wake up in the morning you have a kind of rough idea what the lies ahead in the day but you never know exactly <laughs> once again uh, just having dinner there in the guest house here and then all of a sudden a local band uh, turns up playing traditional music I think it was another um, travel company they've ordered it for their guests but we were lucky to be in the restaurant at the same time so we got to experience it so that was just uh, Wonderful experience, totally unexpected. So you just never know what lies ahead sometimes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, now we're at the guest host here. So uh, we've had five days now uh, cycling to Songkul and uh, back out again over the mountains. So five days without internet. So first time we got to the restaurant at lunchtime, we got the internet again. So uh, we've been offline for a few days now, but that's the way it is here in uh, Kyrgyzstan. So. Uh, uh, that may happen again, we'll see how it goes. But um, yeah, so now we're here, just had a shower. It was so nice after a few days. <laughs> and uh, shave a little bit of the beard off, so I don't look like a wilderness man anymore. But uh, yeah, so uh, that's it really. We'll have a nice rest here this evening. Tomorrow morning breakfast, then we're off to Song, no, Isikul. It's another lake, the biggest lake here in Kyrgyzstan. And we're actually really lucky because there's something called the Nomad Games that's starting in a few days time. Actually a bit of a coincidence but we should be there around about the same time. And I think it's free to get in apart from the opening ceremony so that'll be good. Maybe we'll be able to see that. But, uh, we've heard a lot about it and no, we may even work out that we're there at the right time. So okay, we'll uh, see you tomorrow. Okay, good night.